Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Jones. I'm a cloud domain architect for North American Public Sector at Red Hat. Today I wanted to talk to you about a joint effort we did with Unova this year at SC18. So we pulled together the NavOps operations suite and Unova Grid Engine and put that together on Red Hat's OpenShift container platform. Now what this gives us is a powerful set of utilities to run HPC workloads in a cloud-like environment with containers. So the first thing you're going to see here is actually me creating the Unova Grid Engine cluster on OpenShift. So on the left I'm running some terminal commands and on the right you'll actually see OpenShift Container Platform. And you can see there was a master container that's already been created but there's zero worker pods existing right now. The bottom and the terminal is me actually logging into the container, the master container for the Unova Grid Engine cluster. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually scale up the worker nodes to three. So on the right, you'll actually see them start to come online to a number of three. And on the bottom left, you'll see those come online as far as Grid Engine is concerned. The very next thing I'm going to do is actually log into that cluster again at the top and just run a small sleep command. And this is just to show you that an actual Grid Engine execution can be done as would be normally in a Grid Engine cluster built out on virtual machines or bare metal systems. This just happened to be running containers. So you can see I execute a couple of those jobs and they run through and execute in the grid engine cluster as expected. So this is cool. So we actually have a baseline set up with grid engine in the way that we normally know how to interact with it and execute on it, which means we can now push those jobs into a containerized grid engine cluster on OpenShift container platform. But what we really want to do in this environment is actually give much more control and flexibility, and this is where the NavOps suite comes in. So in this cluster, I have NavOps command running, and I'm going to execute a backend uh, batch job to Kubernetes. So what's happening in the, in behind the scenes right now is that I've actually scheduled a set of 100 containers to be spun up inside of Kubernetes, and I've limited those to run eight at a time. And I've also asked the UGE cluster to scale up to 10 worker nodes. And what you'll see is that as the backend job is starting to execute, and at the same time I had later asked for the scale up on the UGE cluster, the scale up of the UGE cluster is actually waiting on the completion of that backend job before it will start actually scheduling its workers. And this is all controlled by NavOps as far as the amount of resources and quotas on the containers that can be executed by this user and in this project. And so we'll see that some of these are running now in the back-end job on the left there and they're completing as we go. And on the right you can actually see OpenShift's monitoring panel where it's, it's showing you these containers being created and, and killed off as they're completed. So, it's really nice to be able to control this from a from an administrator standpoint to be able to have visibility and control across your container platform for these jobs that are being executed. NavOps has also given us a lot of capabilities for multi-tenancy and logical separation of users and their workloads, which we don't have uh, in traditional HPC clusters. So on the right, I'm actually logging into the NavOps command, and this is showing me proportional shares of my um, projects and my um, capabilities on top of the OpenShift cluster. So we're, we've segmented these out with some rules in NavOps. The last thing you see there is actually the grid engine cluster. Now that some of the backend jobs have completed, the grid engine cluster is actually starting to, sh to schedule its scale up operation as the resources are freeing up. Now in order to go on to the next demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and delete the back-end job processes that were going on and I'm also going to scale the Unova Grid Engine cluster down to zero just to uh, save some of the resources. So now you can see running all we have is the NavOps command containers and the NFS server again with the UG, UGE master. I'm going to go ahead and change the rules for preemption within NavOps. And so what preemption is going to do is let us actually target priority workloads. So I can have some rules that 
say that production workloads get priority over test workloads. So what I'm showing in the bottom left is we're just going to have a watch command run and watch the containers as they spin up. And the very next step I'm going to do is actually launch a test job on the cluster. So it's going to start spinning those up and on the right you can see them moving. But the next step I'm going to submit a production job right after it. So previously the test job would have continued on and created its containers as it needed up to the resources it was allowed. But because we've changed the preemption rules, the production workload actually takes precedence over the test workload. So you can see now that the front end workload, which is our production set, is actually continuing on creating all of its containers, while the test job has basically paused. So everything that was almost running is in that state, but anything that was pending to still start in the test workload is still in a pending state and the production one has taken precedence. And so it's applying all the rules that we have from a quota standpoint and resource standpoint, but it's also given priority to the production workload over the test workload. Now with all this said and done, these are pretty cool demonstrations, but they're just barely touching the surfaces of what we can do in combination of the Unova software suite and Red Hat's OpenShift container platform. So if you think about how containerization is gonna affect HPC and scientific workloads moving forward, particularly when you consider portability and usability, it's amazing what can be accomplished.